released in 1982 in arcades, we have the wildly successful Zaxxon. And Zaxxon was wildly successful because it successfully used isometric 3D graphics, which was quite novel. Made you feel like you were playing in 3D. Let's take a look at how it looks on the ColecoVision home console. Incidentally, Zaxxon was ported to just about every home computer and home console that was in existence at the time. And like all ports of the time, they were wildly different depending on what system you played them on. And in general, the ColecoVision was the go-to system for arcade ports. And as you can see, it's quite true to the original arcade. The ColecoVision does take advantage of the isometric graphics feature of Zaxxon, unlike the Atari 2600, who had a very rudimentary 3D type uh, special effect. And if you think the ColecoVision version of Zaxxon looks kind of primitive, you gotta take a look at the Atari. It's just one big steaming pile of shit. I mean, no offense to true diehard Atari 2600 fans out there. I'm one myself, but Zaxxon was not the game to play on the Atari. I'm sorry. Coleco had it going on. So yeah, Zaxxon is basically a showcase of how to make isometric graphics uh, do something on an early computer. And it was uh, quite impressive. But it is a game, and there is gameplay involved here. Now let me get into that for a little bit. You control that purple and white ship. And it, I don't know if it has a name or not. I'm sure somebody will tell me its name. Uh, but I don't know it off the top of my head, and I don't have the manual for the game. So you control that ship, and you can control its left-to-right orientation as well as altitude. And uh, to control your left-right orientation on the ColecoVision joystick, you move it left to right. And to control your altitude, you pull it back or forward. And it acts like the yoke of a an airplane, basically. Not exactly, but sort of. You get the idea. And you use the one of two buttons on the side of the ColecoVision controller to fire your laser. Now, most of the enemies in Zaxxon are located on the lowermost uh, altitude. So if you want to hit stuff, basically just fly along the ground and shoot. At first, most of your enemies don't shoot at you, but as you progress in the game, it gets harder. They shoot at you, there's other things introduced like force fields and heat-seeking missiles. One of the harder parts of the game is to actually hit those airplanes that fly at you, or spaceships or whatever they are, and change altitude. Because it's very hard to see um, if you're on the same altitude plane as they are. Now if you look closely while you're playing, you'll have a reticle that'll pop up um, when you're both on the same plane but it's hard to see while you're playing. Yeah, I always wondered what the f*** that end boss is. It's like some kind of gas station pump that comes at you and fires all kinds of crap. Um, I wondered what it was when I was a kid in 1982 playing it in the arcade, and I still don't know. It's quite a mystery to me. Anyhow, it's quite difficult to beat in the ColecoVision version. You just fire it a bunch of times, and it kind of retreats. I've never blown it up. Yeah, one thing I'd like to note is those green cylinders. They are fuel tanks, and you get your fuel by shooting them. Doesn't make much sense, but hey, there was uh, limitations at the time, and uh, that was the best I figured they could come up with to refuel your uh, spaceship. And there you have it. That's Zaxxon. It's not the greatest arcade game, but there are a lot of fond memories of Zaxxon. Playing it in the arcade in 1982 was uh, quite a thrill. It had this great uh, joystick yoke thing, that, like emulated an airplane yoke, uh, and it was a lot of fun to play. Uh, kind of didn't age so well, though. Kind of looks uh, crappy. I'm Dami from Classic Games Revisited. Until next time.